Ever since I first covered Samrania on this channel dating back to Arcane Astraleons, I was fascinated with their energy, and I knew again going in I would be because I was familiarized to Morton Velan's other work, Mortemia. If you don't know Morton Velan's name, he's a foundational member here and I think one of the longest standing of the group. Uh, Morton Velan, er, Mort Mortemia is his solo work, and it's, I've engaged with 10 pieces in total from his library there, and it's been very impressive to hear his offerings again on the symphonic metal side. He's a truly capable artist, but I knew with the association to Sirenia, I would probably like this group. And I did on the first three listens. They are a very compelling and atmospheric band, especially in the symphonic metal scene. This is the type of music I love. With atmosphere, with drive, with individuality, Sirenia has that. And the operatic tones are just exquisite. On a part of the manual as Zoltan, she can sing beautifully. But engaging with, we can't, or with uh, Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations for the first time, I'm impressed by the freshness of what I'm hearing. Because it wasn't necessarily like Arcane Astral Aeons for me. Yes, it has the same traits of a symphonic metal de uh, definition, but the individuality of that first piece and the creativity, the, the electronic keyboard elements, the punk rock vibe, or punk, I should be more specific, punk pop rock vibe, the symphonic side with, with the background orchestral vocals, and this dated presence for me, and again, I don't say that in any way to sound like I'm insulting the track. I say dated explicitly as like a throwback in time to music I was more familiarized to in my early days in becoming an emerging metalhead. It really charmed me. And I look for pieces that perhaps express an individual spirit. And it's familiarized with me and the many groups I've consulted in a broad range of genres that you have artists all the time experiment around. Yes, they will of course maintain their definitions to appeal to long-standing fans, but you might have a group that tries new things sporadically and experiments around to see if their creative talents can be employed in other places to give a fresh uh, aesthetic. So I'm really curious to hear if Addiction Number 1's tone pursues on the rest of the album. Or if that was sort of like a one-off track, and this is gonna, gonna it's gonna fall back more into that Sirenia symphonic metal bass, as what I'm familiarized with Arcane Astral Aeons. Either way, I'm excited. Period. I love Sirenia. I, in the recent time I spent with them, I've quickly developed an addiction, as I have many of the European talents. Many of you know I love that aspect of the world, and if you haven't engaged with it, you are missing out. I routinely consult a wide variety, so maybe you want to keep eyes on this channel to engage with groups that might be familiarized to you and you haven't heard from their works, or new names, and I cover a good range intentionally. I didn't even think when I first started consulting music on this channel that it would be such a, uh, a, a dense mainstay for me, and, and such an eager temptation to continue on in pursuance of, because many of you know if you follow my work that I consult a wide range of entertainment ventures. But music for me is definitely a first love, and being able to experience such craftsmanship with you for the first time, in whatever dynamic you approach uh, my content, as well as the artists I showcase, it, it's an experience. I love the collaboration we can have, even if maybe I can't see your face, in it being a shared association. And with Sirenia, if you've not engaged with their work before, I think you're going to really come to like them, especially if you're a metalhead and you're into symphonic metal, specifically as a subgenre, like me. I love the atmosphere and the orchestration to many orchestration specifically to the works within that field. And Sirenia are, in my opinion, masters in that environment. And gifted artists, like I said with Addiction Number One, broad range, obviously, even more than I considered originally. I'm highly keen on hearing more of their work going forward with you. And we will be consulting in total uh, four more tracks, or three more, sorry, from Riddles, Ruins, Revelations, this being the second entry thus far. And then, at the time, you know, when I started planning out which tracks I wanted to consult, this was the more recent album, and they hadn't yet announced 1977. That one's coming out later this year, I believe. That one will be coming as well with the initial track, Twist of My Sobriety. I can't wait to hear that one. But, let's start here with We Come to Ruins. Now, normally, if you're familiar with how I format my content, which tracks I choose to approach, I go by the visualizers, typically, with certain exceptions, and I usually specify when. In this case, I heard a sample in passing when I was purchasing the track, because I pre-buy all the music I consult here to support the artist, in part, and We Come to Ruins sounded pretty charming, at least from what I heard of it. I've forgotten it since, because it was, I think, maybe about two months ago when I started accruing the tracks for myself in lineup of what I wanted to cover. So, let's engage with this track for the first time, because again, that little sample clued me in, I feel. I remember it being a bit intense on that side, which is why I specifically chose it, because again, as a metalhead, and there's a broad taste in that respect to you know how people approach music generally, of course, but in the metal scene, people prefer sometimes softer songs, ballad stuff, or harsher, headbang-type energy. 
I have an open door, but I prefer the uh, the latter. So that's what I feel. I, I think from memory, this track goes in that direction. So we come to Ruins. I'm going to go ahead and consult the song. And if you're not familiar with the way I uh, format my coverage here, I do try and accommodate listener taste. So if you prefer to read the lyrics along with the pieces it uh, plays for you, I will have those provided in the video feed. You'll see those pop up in a minute. And I'll track along with the song as we navigate our way through it together. All right. We come to Ruins. Here we go. Let's see if Addiction Number One's tone continues. Okay, the electronic element is a mainstay. Here comes the metal. Oh! <laughs> I love it! I mean, I forgot about the sample, but I didn't know it was that good. <laughs> Just gets better. We come to ruins, eventually. Good switch. Morton's such a trademark, but here comes the manual. That keyboard pattern with a guitar riff. Oh, it's like we're back into those transitions. I love it. That establishment riff. <laughs> it's so modern, but again, it has that orchestral side to it that feels so classic. And then the choir. Oh, man. I love how explicit her accent is here, too. It's not as high in inflection, but I'm okay with it because you're hearing her accent more stressed. Good path, especially with that. Oh, good mixing. Love it. This is why I cover music on this channel. Again, my favorite art form. This is why. Okay. A key change? Okay. Possibly. I'm interested to hear how this works out, or it could be, they could swipe it back in the original tune. They've done that before as well, if, I, if I'm remembering right, or maybe I'm confusing them with another group. So I thought they did. And, and that'd be in context to Arcane Astral Lions. Okay, I think we are segueing back in, maybe. Because I'd love to return back to the original opening riff. Good visuals, too, in the writing. There it is. <laughs> I guess you can play for a guitar solo. Especially since we're reaching the conclusion. Good wind down on that. Just sit with it.
that grittiness in her, her tonality. It's subtle, but it adds such a nice dimension to each chorus. Okay, we're slowing down. Okay. <laughs> to be honest with you, I was watching the scroll bar, you know, with the track being like, okay, we have it's a five minute in total song, or five minutes and twelve seconds. And I'm I'm wondering in the back of my mind, like, are we gonna return back, like I said, to that opening riff? That was so good the way it began and originated that I was hoping maybe for a reprisal. And we got a mix of that in the interlude before the last iteration of the chorus. Well, the second to last. I'm actually happy with the way it ended here. I am. Um, maybe part of me is still like, I want to hear it again. Yeah, it's going to be an easy repeat. Listen, that opener is freaking fantastic. Um, wow, they nailed it. Which I will say, um, okay, this returns back into mainstream Sirenia extensively, but again, it feels like a bit of a progression, in my opinion. It has the electronic modern tones that were present on Addiction Number 1 that give it, again, this fresher vibe, but yet I listen to this, and I'm like, it's just so staple Sirenia with fresh rock emphasized, or fresh metal. I freaking love it. That opener, though, is just... I, I can't get over how good it is. <laughs> It was perfect. And then to segue immediately into Morton Velan's vocals, who, if you've not listened to Mortemia, that scream, I'm very familiarized to it because he's utilized that, not yet on the COVID Aftermath sessions. I'm waiting to hear it if it ever pops up, even though that, that album's operating from a more hopeful vision, I guess, in the future, where the Pandemic Pandemonium sessions had a explicit um, uh, darker vision, and he sounded perfect there. So hearing his voice again... And especially how it uh, changes between him and... It's not as present here as Emmanuel's is. And Emmanuel's voice... I mean, again, like I said, she's she is so capable as an operatic vocalist. And I've been charmed into that. Here, the operatic personality is much more reduced. Um, it's, it's a little more suppressed. Whereas it's more so just natural vocals where her accent is emboldened. And it's just so beautiful to listen to, especially meshed to those chorus structures. Um... I, I love the tracking of this piece. I mean, again, like I said, it's a mainstream Sirenia song, in my opinion. Like, a pretty mainstream rock metal sound as well, with those killer interludes and the opener. That's my immediate takeaway, at least listening to this. And the writing's pretty good, too. I mean, it's a very visual song. I like that one area in the bridge. What does she say? Uh, we all... We all are waning. We all are fading away. Uh, like a forget-me-not on a midwinter's day. It's kind of beautiful. I like the rhyming. It's good writing structure. I come from an English background. It's what I majored in, so it's one of the first things I noticed. So I haven't read into the track in depth. Um, well, it's pretty insightful, actually, just perusing the chorus. I stare into a descending sun. I fall into oblivion. I falter into wastelands and beyond. I comprehend what my life has become. You know, that's a reflective piece. Um, I'll have to consider more in depth. You know, sometimes it's hard to cover music on a first uh, initial listen, especially when you try to consult every element as I do, especially in lyrical consideration. There's so many times I've considered or consulted a track on this channel where I go back on the song. I'm like, oh man, it means much more, much more to me. And I wish I'd mentioned this originally, but it, it applies on uh, uh, subsequent listens because then you're able to better ingratiate yourself with each particular element. Here, I try to give you a good summary and. The tune oftentimes takes my attention, as it did here. Um, this, again, those opening riffs are so freaking fabulous. Um, man, it's got so much good presence to it. I mean, it definitely fits in the name we come to ruins in regards to the lyrical construction and the vision of it. But, uh, rather, a rather dismal picture, to be honest. But, um... <laughs> eh, you know, sometimes it, there's a mixture of vision in the metal scene. Um, but, you know, I kind of operate from a perspective of you know, I, I've made no secret on this channel. I come from a Christian background. I have more of a hopeful aspiration going forward, even though life is... I mean, you could say that, I mean, you could examine this song in many different ways. Music is open to interpretation generally, uh, depending on perhaps the particular song and the artist's vision and how strengthened the individuality of the piece is in, in its broadness, if applied correctly. But, um, you know, this is speaking in reference to you know, the, like the future, like an afterlife vision, 
you know, I, I have a more hopeful disposition, but you know, maybe the song could be speaking to some people, you know, in the here and now. Again, I maybe have to spend more time of it to experience its grander vision and how it personally applies, but I mean, it fits. I mean, life can, life has that feeling of, um, falling into oblivion and comprehending i often do it's so i already i'm seeing a connection being formed but the piece is just mesmeric in its tone i love that that is very mainstream sirenia with some elements again like i said with that addiction number one song i questioned if that's kind of a path going forward with this experimentation and that's the electronic side again like i said specifically with this project even though i'm familiarized with that again from morton Veland's work on mortemia and in some degree sirenia as well um there's something to it here that feels, again, like I said, modern yet retro. It's very interesting to hear the overlap. Less retro here than it was for Addiction Number 1, but ah, the, the, it, it's still here, though. I mean, again, like I said, there's this there's this individuality with this release, in particular of Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations, that for me, like I said, I'm just, I, I'm impressed by, because it feels very different to Arcane Astral Aeons. Immediate realism, though. Like I said, that sample gave me... I couldn't tell you where that was of what I heard from the sample originally. It was not that opener. That opener is... That's a first introduction completely. I don't remember that at all. Even just in semblance. That was amazing. <laughs> I want to hear it again immediately. I'd imagine it's probably going to be the same impression with many of you. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below if you wish to disclose your perspective. And whatever angle you come from. Longtime Sirenian fan? Or Sirenian? I keep saying Sirenian. Sirenia fan? First exposure? I hope it's the case for many of you, and I would imagine that many of you are probably going to have very complimentary things to say about this, especially if you're symphonic metal fans. I love it. I'd love to hear again what your thoughts are down below. Immediate re-listen for me, and I cannot wait to go forward with more of their work. That was an enthralling piece. It's specifically for me though. There's so many elements working in its favor, but it's that opening riff is just amazing. <laughs> so strong from them. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.